Monday, June 26, A Riot in the Amphitheatre Read Acts chapter 19, verses 21 to chapter 20, verse 1. What lessons can we draw from this story? Let's begin at Acts 19 and verse 21. When these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in the Spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. And about that time there arose a great commotion about the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods, which are made with hands. So, not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised, and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. Now when they heard this, they were full of wrath, and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! So the whole city was filled with confusion, and rushed into the theatre with one accord, having seized Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonians, Paul's travel companions. And when Paul wanted to go to the people, the disciples would not allow him. Then some of the officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent to him, pleading that he would not venture into the theatre. Some, therefore, cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was confused and most of them did not know why they had come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander motioned with his hand and wanted to make his defence to the people. But when they found out that he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about two hours, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! Great is Diana of the Ephesians! And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is temple guardian of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Zeus? Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For you have brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another, but if you have any other inquiry to make, it shall be determined in the lawful assembly. For we are in danger of being called in question for today's uproar, there being no reason which we may give to account for this disorderly gathering." And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. After the uproar had ceased, Paul called the disciples to himself, embraced them, and departed to go to Macedonia. Paul's witness in the large, sophisticated city of Ephesus was so effective that it impacted an important economic engine for the city. Tourism focused on the temple of Artemis. And what a temple it was! This magnificent structure was composed partly of 127 pillars, each 60 feet high, of Parian marble, a pure white, flawless marble, highly prized for sculptures. 36 of these pillars were sculpted and overlain with gold, earning the temple its reputation as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Concerned that Paul's anti-idolatry rhetoric was draining financial support from the temple, as we read in verse 27, Demetrius the silversmith whipped his fellow craftsmen into a frenzy. A rapidly expanding and highly energised crowd swept from the marketplace into the large amphitheatre, which seated some 25,000 people. There the commotion continued, featuring two continuous hours of shouting, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians, as we read in verse 34. 
After the crowd is dispersed by the town clerk, Paul meets with the believers and leaves the city. At the end of his third missionary journey, Paul meets with elders of the Ephesian church. How would you summarise Paul's concerns as we read in Acts 20 verses 17 to 38? From Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know from the first day that I came to Asia in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see now I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the thing that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy, and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have been preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who are with me. I have shown you in every way by labouring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke, that they would see his face no more. And they accompanied him to the ship. A tentative chronology of Paul's Relationship to Ephesus A.D. 52, Paul's initial brief visit to Ephesus is recorded in Acts 18, verses 18 to 21. So Paul still remained a good while. Then he took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria, and Priscilla and Aquila were with him. He had his hair cut off at Centria, for he had taken a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to stay a little longer with them, he did not consent, but took leave of them, saying, I must by all means keep this coming feast in Jerusalem, but I will return again to you, God willing. And he sailed from Ephesus. And then, A.D. 53 to A.D. 56, Paul's three-year ministry in Ephesus. We've just read about that in chapter 19. He composes 1 Corinthians near the end of his stay, as we read in 1 Corinthians 16, verses 5 to 9. Now I will come to you when I pass through Macedonia, for I am passing through Macedonia, and it may be that I will remain or even spend the winter with you, that you may send me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not wish to see you now on the way, but I hope to stay a while with you if the Lord permits. But I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. And then A.D. 62, Paul composes his letter to the Ephesians, probably from confinement in Rome. 
Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears, said Paul in Acts 20 verse 31. To finish the day, what do you think Paul would warn our church about today and why? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.